Hello watchers, I've got a scroll box and it feels like it was only yesterday we got the last one but obviously the last one was late but this one is exactly on time. So let's get it open and see what's inside. It's quite a weighty box as well this month. Last month it felt really light. Ooh. I'm guessing it's paints, <laughs> paint tubes, acrylic of some kind. Yeah, I'm guessing, I'm guessing. But we'll look at the magazine in a little bit. Look how nice this print is. Very geometrical. By Julian Reynard. Um, so obviously the surface we've got is some, ooh, acrylic paper. But it's like textured like canvas, whereas the acrylic paper I've used before is um, it's quite smooth, but this is really textured. So there's how many sheets of this? Um, six sheets. So interesting to see what that one is. Excuse my hands as well, I've it had extreme cooking accidents <laughs> well not extreme but um that one was done by grating um a lemon to get the zest and then my thumbs are now permanently yellow <laughs> from a particular spice i was using um if you can guess the spice leave it in the comments below and i'll i don't know i'll send you a sticker or something or a few art supplies or something if you can guess the the spice that i was using that's permanently <laughs> well it's not permanently but it will take a long time for it to wash off even though i've been scrubbing like crazy but anyway i digress um let's open the tissue oh ah we've got the sticker from last month because we didn't get it, so we've got it for this month, so that's fine. And then this month's sticker is right here. Same as the print, and then what is going on? Okay, so we've got some Sennelier Abstract um, Matte Soft Body, so it's not as glossy. Um, so that's why, and then this is cadmium red and indigo blue. Um, so yeah, I've never used the abstract Sennelia paints, but I'm not a huge um, acrylic painter. Then we've got a paintbrush, Pro Art um, number six. And then we've got this Dowlet and Rowney, Daily and Rowney, um, acrylic paint marker which is I'm guessing black yes black and then a Knorr magic hard tumph Ooh, look at that why is this magic I wonder um, and then some popping candy we love some popping candy. Okay. Da, 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 da. And then this mum's prompt is fractured figures. Ah, I get it. So on here you can see that there's faces, but they've sort of messed with the um, traditional way of two eyes and nose and a thing. Put them in squares and move them around. So bit nice a bit of cubism a bit of surrealism i think um there's probably a particular style for this but i don't remember so yeah i love how the colors are the french flag <laughs> and sennelier is french so yeah um yep so let's have a quick flip through of the zine Open it up. It feels like thicker paper than normal. 
which I personally prefer. Um, da, 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 da. They have a blue one up there. Mine's red. I wonder if people got different ones. Because I know in Scroller Box they give everybody the same colours, which... I don't know. I, I kind of like the, dare I say it, art snacks. Um, they put different colours in for everybody. So it means that everybody produces something that looks the same if they s stick to the prompt, but yet not the same because they've got different colours. So I kind of like that aspect, but scrollers stick to the same colours. So I don't know if that's something they're going to think about doing in the future. But I know some people don't like it. They like having the primaries every month of, the se of different mediums, which to me is, gets quite boring. But anyway, I digress again. Um, the artist about his lovely work. Ooh, I like how he's got the sort of like very uh, geometric sort of shapes and then he's gone off the edges as um, just paint splatters and things. But it just, it breaks up that geometricness. If I don't know what I'm saying, but I, it's, just, it's just nice to see that it's not the whole canvas is the same. So that's, that's a nice take. Um, some tips and notes from the artist. And then the gallery from December 2020. This is nice. I really like Jen's. And then Cubist Influence. See, I got one of them right Slightly surrealist as well, but anyway. Pablo Picasso. That's what I was thinking of, but I couldn't get the name out. Um, and then scroll up, say, update, um, and then on about Brit Exit, and then this best sticker. So, yeah. Let's swatch these things out, shall we? Fractured figures. Hmm? So what's so special about this magic pencil? It's magic because it does red and I'm assuming white um, and blue all at once. Is this a wax crayon or what? But I think it's like a wax. It's more of a crayon than a pencil. Let's see if it rubs out quite easily. Um. It does rub out a little bit, but it does leave a mark behind. So it might be a hybrid between pencil and um, wax crayon. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Now let's get the paint marker out. Everybody seems to be doing paint markers at the moment. Everybody. Um, I like the feel of this barrel. It's not glossy, as mad as that sounds. Um, let's see how we use this. I'm just going to use it like a Posca. Shake and pump. So yeah, like a Posca. Let's shake it with lid just in case. It's going to be matte or is it going to be glossy? I mean, the tip's nice and strong. It's not like it's giving you a um, smooth, solid line. That flows really nicely. So, um, I have some water pots to the side, just in case. It was going to be a wet media. Let's just wet this brush. Do 
I need a palette? Mm, probably. <laughs> Do you want to know a funny sort of side bit? I finally got hold of a ceramic palette. And um, <laughs> I now seem to have misplaced it in my studio because I cannot find the bloody thing for love nor money. <laughs> so now I'm back to using the plastic palettes. <laughs> uh, just put a little bit of a blob because we're only swatchy swat. Oh, that's not a little bit of a blob. That's not a little bit of blob. Oh, it keeps coming. It keeps coming. There's not a little bit of a blurb, that was a big blurb. We'll do some mixing to see what colours we can get with these as well. They have the white. But I know a lot of people are going to moan about the fact that we don't have yellow. But that's part of the challenge. It makes it more interesting this way. Look at that. I get the small blobs. There must have been a lot of air in the blue one. Um, these are just the 60 mil bags, by the way, they're not the full um, size bags, so they're just like sample sizes. Um, I didn't want to get my brush too wet because it's acrylic, so I know it doesn't like it. So, the blue is a very nice blue. And the name is very apt, it is quite an indigo blue as opposed to... Um, uh, cobalt blue it's got that sort of grey undertone I think now we'll do the red but it's moving um, laying down really nicely and smoothly on the paper even though the paper is quite textured, like canvas. But it's quite nice to have that in acrylic. Um, let's try and see if the white goes over the top. Not too much though, because obviously the paint's still wet. But it is a little bit opaque, a little bit. Right, so let's mix a little bit of red with the white and then we should get obviously very rich sort of maroony almost purpley then let's try mixing um, a little bit of the red and with more of the blue and that's just gonna make it because the blue pigments are usually the strongest um, and that's going to give me exactly the same colour. Well, not exactly the same, but almost the same. So let's mix that then with a bit of the white and see if we can make it slightly a bit lighter. Yeah. I find sometimes mixing white with acrylics actually muddies the colour, gives it that dull, I suppose the correct term is muted. Um, which sometimes is really nice to have but if you're doing a whole piece in it I, I think it can look quite sort of almost like the paintings dirty but well, that's just my opinion my opinion um, did I mix all the colors yep so we did light we did thingy let's see if we can just get more of the red and then a dash of blue Trying to make purple, that's what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> I don't think I'm succeeding. I think it's the wrong colours to 
really do that with. But hang on, hang on. Look at that. Almost made a love heart as well. Put just a dab of that in there as well. Uh, a little bit more of the red, do you think? No, I practically made the same colour. <laughs> in the palette, it looks slightly different. Um, no, put a bit more blue in there. Yeah, we've got more of a muted um, violet now, I'd definitely say, especially now that my brush is really wet. So therefore, it's watering down the pigment, which actually, it does quite well. Um, there's not really an issue with it water, um, watering down, because I know some acrylics, when you water them down, they, it really doesn't like it. But this seems to be okay. So let's try a bit of red, really watered down, and see what that looks like. So we're using it like um, watercolour almost. virtually the same colour. That's better. Let me give it this colour. But obviously with um, acrylic it's permanent once it's dry. Um, actually I think it is. Or have I got too used to using acrylic gouache? No it must be because hence acrylic so yeah it must be permanent once it's wet. Uh, dry. <laughs> you love how my brain works. Um, so let's put some white in the red, which we know is going to get a very, very dusky pink. Doesn't really make a too much of a difference adding white to the watered down version. So instead of using white, if you want a light colour, just add more water, I think. Even though traditionally you're not supposed to use water with acrylic. But anywho. I mean, you do get a strange texture as it's drying, um, but sometimes that might be useful. And create a little bit of peaks and things and see how it sits or how it dries. Let's put some of the purple in there just for the hell of it. I can't now not unsee the French flag. <laughs> it's exactly the same colours, um, which is hilarious because they're going on about Brit exit in the um, the scholar zine and then they've given us the French colours. <laughs> the Brit I suppose you could argue, yeah, but it's the British colours too, but um, the British colours are actually slightly brighter than what the French use. Um, so it's, <laughs> it's just funny. Okay. So, hmm. Fractured faces. I need to have a think and sketch out some ideas about what we're going to do for the scroller challenge. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I'll be back in a second with the challenge. Okay, I've had another little bit of play with the colours and trying to get as much tonal value out of the red and the blue. Um, I've done this by just adding white and black and then obviously I've mixed the um, red and blue to get the sort of purplish colour. Um, you can get more of a marine, maroon colour as well. 
um, and then just done the same as well and then with the white and the black acrylic paint marker I've just sort of made some grey values as well and then some other experiments of seeing what it's like um, laying down the pencil and then painting over the top um, which you can see through so that's interesting to create some textures and then also blending directly on the paper as well and the other technique that I've tried is wetting the paper first and then dabbing it and seeing how it spreads pretty much like how you would do with watercolour um, I tried wetting the paper and then using the pencil over the top and all it does is rip up the paper so I wouldn't really recommend doing that <laughs> Um, so yeah, they're the other experiments that I've done as well on another piece of paper here. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to give you a little um, a spoiler of some characters. I mean, if you've seen some of my other videos, you may have heard me mention Ar Archie, the um, fox. Um, and you might have seen me do a few bits of work. So I'm going to do him again, but also with another character called Archimus. Um, which is like a mini me that I'm going to animate into my videos and do some other stuff with that I'm currently working on behind the scenes but um, it's uh, animation takes a long time um, even though I'm getting help it's still taking a long time because I'm slow <laughs> what can I say so what I've decided to do um, this is just a reference image that I'm going to use to do um, I've decided to do Archimus in blue this is her um, with her little bow and arrow and two architectural tools that she uses and then um, I flipped Archie upside down because I thought it made a nice sort of yin yang contrast is what I'm trying to say um, and that's him in all of his glory um, in keep him red because he's a fox so makes more sense um, like any of this is going to make any sense but this is the reference image that I'm going to be working on. So a little spoiler of some characters that are going to be featuring in, in, in videos in the future. Um, so I'm just going to put that to one side to keep an eye on. I've already gone ahead and sketched out what I'm doing because it took quite a while for me to sort of break things up and I have gone down quite the cubist route because um, the art issues cubism and also the prompt was fractured figures so Archimus and Archie are my figures that I'm going to fracture <clears throat> however I was originally sketching on this piece of paper um, but I mean it's good if I was just drawing them like that that would be fine but when you start fracturing and pulling things out, things get bigger and moved around. So I felt like I needed more space to work with. <clears throat> so what I've done is sellotaped four sheets of paper. <laughs> this are <clears throat> the remaining um, sheets of acrylic paper together to create this. Now I could have just taped them together like um, so they match up and make a perfect A3 size. But this is cubism, so I thought I'd play with the um, layout of that as well to give a little bit more interest. Which now means that I've used all my shoots. I've got to admit, I do really like this paper. I like how the acrylic lays on it. Because even though it's matte and it's supposed to not create too much texture, um, it's nice to ha have that feeling of canvas. I don't, I don't know why. Acrylic and canvas, to me, goes hand in hand. So, yeah, I've used all the paper in the pad so I might invest in getting some more of those if I do some more acrylic painting again it's usually not in my remit but I've gone ahead and done some wacky sketching and drawing and come up with this little puzzle of a piece so I'm just gonna go ahead now and fill in all the color I'm gonna try doing some shading and texturizing stuff Let's go ahead and get some colours. Oh, and the other thing is, 
I found my ceramic palette. <laughs> Not that anyone cares, but I do because it was annoying me. I, it was in the most obvious place as well. It's just <sighs> so silly of me. Um, and it has the lid as well that you can use as a palette as well, which I think I'm going to do um, here. So I'll just put them to the side. I've also got some like uh, just rag that I use for painting and things. Um, just to either take too much off the brush or dry the brush or whatever so yep i'm gonna shut up and just get on with filling this in One thing I've realized is I need to be careful with my brush strokes because um, I'm used to using acrylic gouache which is pretty much self-leveling um, so it's <laughs> you don't have to worry about your brush strokes. Um, that is not the case with these so um, yeah I need to be wary of that because I'm trying to go for like a flat sort of piece um, which is I think the whole reason behind the matte paint but yeah let's get into filling in the red Okay, so I just want to talk a little bit about the materials that we got in the box. Um, first of all, the paintbrush, the Pro Art. Um, after I finished doing the blue segments of the painting, this it, it just it. I don't know if you can see that. It's not really, it's just like splayed out, so it was made it really difficult to try and do, not splayed out, but like, it doesn't go to a point like it did when I originally got it. Um, and it's made it really difficult to try and get any details, because when you get a little bit of paint on, it just, it just, I don't know, it just... It's it's a brush that I would now consider a glue brush. Let's put it that way. Um, so I just had to use a Dela and Brownie system free brush that I had anyway. And as you can see, this is the same. Sorry, it's not the same size. It's size four, so it's the size down. But as you can see, it still has the point on it. So that's kind of how it should be. So I'm a bit disappointed with the paintbrush. It's it's not very good quality. Um, the magic pencil, um, I didn't end up using because I, I, it, it just, it feels gimmicky. It's, yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> that's all I can really say about it is that it feels gimmicky, um, and not really an actual art supply. Um, and plus when you do colour in with it like for instance there they it just looks muddy in like a child's drawing it just mm. the um daily rani simply acrylic marker it was good i mean it's done everything that i wanted it to however it does dry up quite a bit um and it just take a while to get it going again even though this was while I was using it. It wasn't like, cause I left it on the shelf for an hour or anything. It's while I was using it. Um, but that's easily solved by just pumping it back up 
but I feel like there's not a lot of pain in there, if that makes sense, because, I don't know, it's just, when I first, hmm, well yeah, that's that. The abstract paints, I think they're really nice, it's just there's a learning curve with me because I've got to remember that pure acrylic, whether it's matte or not matte, um, doesn't behave the way that acrylic gouache does. Gouache is self-leveling and it doesn't show brush marks, whereas acrylics do. So that's on my skill level, not on the actual product. But these, I found these really opaque, especially the white. Um, and the blue is a really nice blue. It's it's not your ultramarine blue, blue or your Persian blues. It is definitely worthy of the title indigo blue because it's got sort of like that denim sort of blue color, which I'll show you in a second on the on the final piece. So yeah, I, I, I really like the um, the acrylic paint. I forgot what it was then for a second. Um, the paper, I really like the paper as well. I mean, I've used, I think, canvas board, um, where it was like stuck to a, a thin piece of plywood, I think it was, from Art Snacks ages ago, and August actually, it just popped into my brain. And it had the same sort of texture, um, that was really nice to work on as well, just it being a board. I was a bit apprehensive about it being paper because I was expecting it to really curl up and crinkle, you know, like how watercolour paper does. It doesn't, it does curve up a little bit, but obviously you can flatten that back down. Um, because I think that's purely just because of the weight of the paint. It just sort of, you know, as it's drying a little bit. But it's really nice paper to work on, but even the pencil went on it quite well. Um, and the paints adhered to it really well. Um, and because it's matte paint, you did get the sort of flat, blocky colour, which is what we were going for. But if you layer it up thick, as you can tell in the colour chart, you can get really sort of textured strokes as well if you wanted to. So yeah, I love those products. Not so much for those products. Now, what I would suggest to Scroller if they do ever watch this video, is instead of trying to tick the boxes of, okay, we've got a star product, then a surface, then we need some sort of fine liner or black pen. And then we need a pencil of some sort. And then a paintbrush of some sort, which seems to be pretty much every box. They, ha they have like this list of must have that, 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 and that. Instead of doing that, for instance, for this box, I would have, instead of having the gimmicky pencil, um, I would have a better quality paintbrush and maybe take have two better quality paintbrushes and take those ones out and just make it do with that. Um, or just one quali good quality paintbrush and then a, uh, the marker as well, so then at least you've got four colours. But having to have a pencil in a box every month is just pointless, especially when it comes to graphite where you, where you always get umpteen amounts of 2B and so on. It's not needed every month, it really isn't. And the same with paintbrushes. If you've just done a box, I know some subscribers, they don't get a box every month. They like to pick and choose whenever they get a box, but that's exactly that. They choose. So they're going for the bits they want in the box anyway. Um, so yeah, I, I think scholars should just sort of think about not trying to tick the boxes of having the same sort of items each month and um, sort of change it up a little bit. That's my advice anyway. <laughs> I digress. But anyway, back to what I actually created with this. As I said, I used the other four sheets of the acrylic paper and stuck them together to create a bigger piece, which is almost A3. And then I took this image, this reference image of two characters that I'm sort of animating for my videos and things. That I'm very excited about. It's just a slow process for me, anyway. Um, so yeah, I took those. So they're just the things, and then we fractured them, which is the prompt fractured figures. So they're my figures, and now they have been 
Ratchet. And also a little bit of cubism in things. Um, I've not worked too much in terms of shading. There's a little bit. And then I've not worked too much in the textures as well. But I've managed to keep the girl and sort of her fractured elements going off in the bloom. And then Ar Archie the fox um, in the red. And then his bits floating off. And then I've used grey tones um, just sort of for the background. Um, to add a little bit more intrigue as opposed to blank spaces because in cubism there's no blank spaces you fill that up with detail <laughs> um so yeah i mean i think it worked out really well and i actually really enjoyed this um as you can see i've used the black marker for filling in the lines as well that's why i wasn't being too careful with painting right up to the edges because i knew i was going to go with the black marker over the top so i wasn't too worried about that it did take me a long time to do, but I, it's because I didn't just sit down and do it for hours on end because I have other things like work <laughs> and cooking and other stuff that I need to do as well. So, um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this box. I hope you guys liked this video and if you did get the box, let me know in the comments below, like leave me a link and I'll go and check out what you guys did as well. Um, whether it's a photo or a video or whatever it is you guys have got of it that would be lovely because I do actually quite like cubism I'm like a bit flippant with cubism I mean sometimes I look at it like I instantly look at this and go look at that mess but then when I sit and look at it for about one or two minutes more I actually start in it's like a puzzle that you're working out in your brain that's that's what I like about cu cubism um, as daft as that sounds but yeah, so it'd be interesting to see other people's take on it. So please, please, in the comments below, let me know what you guys have done and sort of indicate where it is so I can go and see it. Um, I'm actually looking forward to the scroller zine, which I think will be March. I think it might be April's edition where they show what other people have done. And then obviously there's the online community as well. So I'll have a good nosy around there as well. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And obviously, like and subscribe. It does help my channel grow. And um, I hate saying it, I really do. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, another thing that will help me out a lot as well is if you shared my video with people that you think might enjoy it as well. Or have a good giggle and go, that's not art. <laughs> And it's definitely not architecture. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. And in the meantime, happy architecting.